In London, Premier Lloyd George inspected the Royal Irish Constabulary. With them, operating in Ireland, was another force, known by the uniforms it sported as the Black and Tans, a force of tough-minded volunteers for service in an unhappy land. For Ireland was an unhappy land. <laughs> In the streets of this city, some of the first ever pages in the ever-evolving book of modern urban guerrilla warfare were written. And some of the actions that took place in Cork inspired freedom fighters all around the world, from the legs of Ho Chi Minh to Che Guevara. If a bunch of pasty patties can take on the mightiest empire to ever have existed and win, then so could they. Last week in Pakistan, we met the RSC, the British Army, Yonkies, and the Black and Times. Last week in Pakistan, the King's gallant scallywags went for a gallivant. Last week in Pakistan, the hope of the land and the scope of a partisan. Last week in Pakistan, the Black and Times met the Ryan, got the back of the hand. Grand. If you've just joined us, it's December 11th, 1920, so we're about 700 odd years into the subjugation of Ireland, and it's currently Churchill's turn to suppress the natives. For his go, he's chosen the Black and Times, a fine choice. Unfortunately for him, they've just been ambushed by the Cork Number One Brigade. But not to worry, official reprisals are the order of the day, which means collective punishment it is. And now to calm and down. Summerhill. Burning and looting as they went, they then came to the corner of McCurtain Street, only to be greeted by the burnt out shell of another one of their barracks, which had been situated on what had been called King Street. Following the assassination of Tomás McCurtain previously, they changed it from King Street to McCurtain Street, named after an actual true Cork King. All the king's horses and all the king's men would have of course been completely oblivious to the subtlety of an entire host body trying to reject these cancerous cells threatening its existence. Churchill's mercenaries, as they went down McCurtain Street, would have stopped at some of the various watering holes to satiate their thirst. As we all know, when you're oppressing an entire people and carrying out mass reprisals, a couple of pints goes a long way. It's unknown whether they paid their tab. All oh, hands, the black and times and the boxy oxies trying to act the sham. They spill their points while they kill our rhymes with a big can of gas in a bag of cans, the black and times. Having finished nibbling on the appetizer of the north side of the city, the black and tans, these, these dregs of the trenches, these varicose veins on the otherwise sexy slinky leg of freedom, then marched across Patrick's Bridge and onto Patrick Street for the main course in the heart of the city. Resistance had gone underground. In reprisals for rebel acts of violence, British troops set fire to Irish shops and houses. A poor land was made yet poorer. There was really no way to rule a fair city. Let me tell you exactly what's happening now This pack of fanatical hounds, bandits and clones Bastards of black and a brown Here keeping the savages down Cunts putting our lads in the ground The hand of the crown that sits on the head of the dad of the dad of your one Whose head's on the back of the pound Well they're coming to town and they're burning the dome When Churchill's mercenaries got to Patrick Street They would have found the city decked out In all uh, the Christmas regalia, you know The whole place would have been looking lovely It was almost Christmas time they don't give a fuck. Panna looking lovely. As these jackboots of the Empire marched down Patrick Street, they started shooting at random people and setting buildings alight. It's a good thing they didn't come across this street painting of the Kill Michael ambush where two weeks earlier, 18 tans had been killed in a similar ambush by Tom Barry's flying column. Uh, but it had been freaked. When they got to this point here on Patrick Street, they began to organize. They began to call out all the residents from these buildings here so they could set them on fire. It was martial law, you had to fucking do it. You had to fucking, had to fucking do it. All these buildings behind me completely destroyed. And in fact, from this point where I'm standing, five acres of the city was annihilated as these varicose veins on the leg of freedom continued their filthy march to our beautiful city. Buildings behind me here, gone. These lovely buildings here, gone. Everything down there, gone. Five acres of inner city was completely and utterly destroyed. This entire area would have been one giant inferno 
as these absolute scurrilous cunts march through our beautiful city. It was a scene they were well used to. These men had just spent years in the trenches fighting for their king. And now they were here in Cork fighting for their king again. These boys love it. You're from Italy. Yeah. I'm here doing a documentary on the day that the British burnt down Cork City. Okay. So in 1920, if hell existed, Mussolini and Churchill would be sucking each yeah. other's dicks there today. Yeah, yeah the, world's, the, the world's the world's shittest travel show. Shittiest? Uh, yeah, shittest, like it's shit. So as the jackboots of the empire walked through this street, they set everything alight. These buildings behind me here, destroyed. These buildings behind me here, destroyed. The king's fucking men, huh? They had enough of the destruction, they said they may as well make a bit of money out of it, so they started the looting of a couple of jewellers on Oliver Plunkett Street. What's going on? I don't really know why I'm talking to my hole and I don't even know why. And I've been doing it my whole life except now I'm beaming it into your mobile. These jetsam of society, chewed up and discarded by their king, then marched down Oliver Plunkett Street, continuing their rampage. And then they moved on to the lovely South Mall for a bit of shenanigans. Let's check that out, huh? Hey, you're through to the merman. How can I help? Merman, listen man, can, can you talk? I'm having a bit of a personal crisis here. Jesus, what is it, bro? Yeah, I, I, I've been making a documentary about the burning of Cork by the Black and Tans. Bastards. Yeah, but uh, I've been spending so much time looking at their faces. I, I, I can't help but feel they were no different to the Irishmen who got sent to Dine Europe because of the King's propaganda. My God, man, you've lost it. Shut up and listen to me carefully. Okay. I want you to go home right now, take three big swigs of whiskey, stick on your old Wolf Tones record, and don't leave the room until your nose is burning with the heat of injustice. All right, all right, thanks, Marman. We'll get you through this. Thanks. The band of motherless runts continued walking down South Mall, torching all they saw fit. And some say that uh, when the breeze is low, you can still smell the filthy stench of the king's jackboots walking these streets. When they were satisfied with the destruction on South Mall, they then crossed over the southern leg of the River Lee across Parnell Bridge to claim their greatest prize. The City Hall, the symbol of resistance to British rule in the city. So the two statues in front of the City Hall, two fucking legends, let's do legend number one. Listen up to the sermon of Churchill's burden that never runs start in to Moss McCartin. Back from internment, down to put the work in the underground government. Subterfuge and subversion, if you're born as a serf then you die an insurgent. In 1918, he became a brigade commander of the IRA, which is actually the highest rank you could attain. And in January 1920, he became the Lord Mayor of Cork and uh, instantly tried to bring about bringing in political reforms. On the 20th of March, that same year, a bunch of Crown Force clowns with blackened faces burst through his door and riddled him with bullets, killing him on his 36th birthday. The big fella, Michael Collins, hearing about this murder, ordered the execution of a certain Inspector Swansea, who apparently masterminded this uh, political assassination. So, he sent his bunch of bowl boys up and they took out Inspector Swansea with Tomas McCartan's own revolver. That's some hardcore shit. Yeah. What you make of that? Those English boys are so betrayal, unbelievable, yeah. you know? It's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's a good thing we live in days of freedom now. Yes. Thank <laughs> God. We got our... We got our 12 counties back. Yeah, Do you yeah. know what? Thank God. Now we'll move on to legend number two. The successor to Tomás McCartan was Terence McSweeney, a playwright, an author, a politician, and just a general badass motherfucker who won't take no shit from nobody. In August 1920, he was charged with possession of seditious documents, and in a sham military trial, he was sent off to Brixton Prison. 
When the verdict was announced at his show trial Nick Sweeney declared I shall be free Dead or alive within the month As he launched into a hunger strike from his prison cell As the days went on his protest made headlines around the world Causing strikes and boycotts in the New York docks And riots in Catalonia And as the pressure built on the British government The Empire's cruel treatment of the Irish gained worldwide attention The whole world tuned in to hear the daily updates Of this great man's ordeal protests in Spain, Germany, the States, South America and after 73 days refusing food he finally perished. He was an inspiration to Ho Chi Minh and Gandhi and others around the world who were fighting imperialism and slavery and from his prison cell in Brixton he said it is not he who can inflict the most but he who can endure the most who will prevail. What a fucking OG. Two Lord Mayors, two more martyrs, two more funerals, two, two less fathers, fathers, two more volleys fired, fired over the harbour, two more bodies hanging in the King's Parlour, two Lord Mayors, two more martyrs, two more tombs and two less fathers, two more volleys fired over the harbour, two more reasons for the demon's departure, two Lord Mayors, two Lord Mayors, two more martyrs, two more martyrs, two Lord Mayors, two Lord Mayors, two more martyrs, two more martyrs. Let's get back to the men of black and brown and see what kind of crack they're having now. Look at these cunts. Having just seen the death of two of the Lord Mayors, they decided they better finish the job and destroy this this symbol, you know? They crossed the bridge and came upon it, burst through the doors. And stationed inside, there was a, a number of firemen, just in case this sort of situation happened. The black and tans fired on them, kicked them out, started chucking a load of petrol through the doors and the windows. Then they threw in their bombs, and they burnt that motherfucker to the ground. Not satisfied with just burning down the most beautiful and prominent building in the city, they also burnt down Carnegie Library, which is... Uh, oh, it's not there anymore. They fucking burnt it down. Later, during the inquiry, not only did the Brits say that the fires in Cork had been set by the people of Cork, as in they set their own city on fire, but they said that the city hall caught fire completely accidentally from embers from the Patrick Street fire, which is across the river and a couple of blocks that way. There really just is no end to their bullshit, is there? No, there's not. So now maybe it's time we find something that wasn't burned down by that big bunch of bollocks of the black and tans. Behold, the English market. I swear to God, get your ass to the English market. Buy yourself a lovely monk fish from the Arctic. Highly regarded, Kathy bait with the yardstick. Don't get me started. In 2011, a certain Miss Elizabeth Windsor, who is the, uh, the English queen, became the first monarch to set foot in their former colony in a hundred years and the first one to set foot in a free Ireland. So uh, following an unprecedented security operation which included uh, the removal of every rubbish bin in the city, the bolting down of every manhole cover and the posting of snipers on roofs, uh, Miss Windsor was generally received warmly by the stall holders. Do you like fish do you? Do you like fish? Here's a little shout out to all the lovely English people I know that many of you now regard us as equal But your government's evil, your leaders are weasels The NHS is great, and I love the Beatles Your history involving your colonies is evil Penal law stealing the peace from the feeble Your armies in the Middle East and still ain't leaving But I think you're grand, I guess Interestingly, the Queen wasn't shot or blown up once not even a little bit, which goes to show just how wonderful life can be when people are treated as equals. And uh, now Ireland and England are the best of friends. Hello there, as your new neighbour. Gorilla City, gorillas in the mist Got the rifle on the back, got the pistol in the fist Got the names of the dead men walking on the list The gorillas, the gorillas, the gorillas Gorilla City, gorillas in the mist Got the rifle on the back, got the pistol in the fist Got the names of the dead men walking on the list The gorillas, the gorillas, the gorillas